your situation is quite similar to somebody who is starting to learn how to swim even though you may learn how to swim in water you may not know how to swim in this ocean of information which you are finding yourself in as a upsc aspirant and this happens to everybody it is not something to be alarmed at but the analogy of you swimming versus you being in the upsc and this ocean of information that metaphor is actually accurate because when you first see that large body of water you don't understand or have any knowledge of how you can possibly cross it but then slowly you begin to learn it the instructor may begin to give you some lessons give you some support to help you start paddling start waddling start moving your arms and legs and so on and then you ultimately learn how to navigate the whole thing yourselves and it can be taken to the extent that people are able to swim across entire seas entire oceans in fact that world records exist like that so the upsc exam in this metaphor in fact is quite like that you have to swim through this ocean of information ocean of knowledge and what i'm going to do what my intention is is to get you there to teach you to swim well enough so that you can cross it right that is what you will need to develop and that's what takes sometimes more than one attempt for people to do but hopefully that will not happen to you because you will have the benefit of hindsight and you will have the benefit of the experience and all of these simplifications all these techniques all these mechanisms which i will give you now speaking of mechanisms the one i gave you last time which we had quite a lot of discussion about was we were analyzing the current affairs and we were doing so using the daily feeder page many of you filled the daily feeder page and maintained a streak for many days some some of you may have dropped out after two days some of you were able to continue until seven days whoever did it to that point has probably now gotten into that habit of filling this every day and basically extracting the newspaper for those who don't know just in case this is a format which we use to condense the entire newspaper of the day that's how we do it and there are various blocks and it's like a fill in the blanks type format that analogy of you swimming through the ocean and swimming through that ocean of information the newspaper is a good example of it every day you will have this 30 40 50 pages full of text and if you are not swimming through information when you look at that and you multiply that into 365 or perhaps even more and i don't know what an ocean is that is what an ocean of information is and the way you cross it is going to determine how well you do and what we are going to do today is precisely that so a quick refresher quick refresher although i know that you may not need it we did the daily feeder page we were extracting a newspaper every single day and we were putting it in this format now one column in this format the last one in fact is called the keyword extractor see the last one it's called keyword extractor and here you see that the student has analyzed and they have listed certain keywords now we did not do anything with these keywords at that time we just took them and i mentioned and i also told you that we should save these keywords because we will be using them and today we are going to be using them and i'm going to throw out another challenge another challenge so what is going to happen next well something very interesting is about to happen and what's going to happen next is that you are going to be challenged to undertake the keyword analyzer challenge the keyword analyzer now all the keywords that we had selected over the past 7 days or for your in your case perhaps 2 or 3 or whatever it doesn't matter the point is when we extract information from the newspaper how do we revise it that problem needs to be solved it hasn't yet been solved all we have done so far is found a good efficient way to extract the information to mine it but still that information will itself keep piling up day after day after day you fill these daily feeder pages and you will have a whole bunch and you, there is there has to be a way in which that helps you consolidate all that information consolidate it transform that information into the type of information used in the exam that 
and how that basically also answers the question of how to revise that is the purpose of this tool and this session and the challenge that is going to be forthcoming so i will show this to you in detail and i will walk you through each one of these and also explain to you how you are going to do this this before i get into the details ladies and gentlemen is level 2 that daily feeder page that we did was level 1 it was simple i gave you a very strict format that didn't require you to do much you were able to put things in the order there may have been some subjectivity maybe your keywords are slightly different from mine and they may be slightly different for the third person but this is going to really challenge you and it will force you to think from the point of view of the exam just like the upsc expects you to think about we are not going to wait for a whole attempt to pass for us to figure out oh this is what the upsc wanted all along we are going to start from day one itself right so this keyword analyzer challenge has four sections four sections each keyword that we had extracted we must put through these four sections each keyword that we extracted i will show you demonstrations i will also do one or two for you so no problem there what is this the, the, the first one that you see is obviously simple enough it is the keyword feeder all you have to do is take the keyword list it below i will show you what it looks like this is you just taking the keywords now one question you might have is that over the past 7 days you have collected you may have collected many keywords many and though that's fine today we will invest the effort to analyze them to extract information from them to reverse engineer it and i will obviously demonstrate everything but minimum 50 let us put it at 50 minimum 50 keywords should be analyzed if you are not able to analyze your own keywords then i will give you a list of 50 keywords but i really would prefer it that you use your own the ones that you have taken out because they already hold significance for you and you've already processed them so the first is simple enough that's just us putting the keyword where it belongs the second one is interesting the second one that you must put it through is called the 360 degree big picture condenser 360 degree big picture condenser i will demonstrate how this works so this is what your keyword analyzer tool which i will send you is going to look like the first one is the keyword analyzer and i have inserted some keywords which appeared which were important very important in fact so we'll see what to do with them but this column if you take a look at it run the selected keywords through a 180 degree second 180 second google images google news and google images google search so this is asking you to put this keyword through these searches it is it is saying invest 60 seconds in google search invest 60 seconds in google images invest 60 seconds in google news preferably or if you want have 180 seconds or 3 minutes for the whole thing to just look see observe explore what it might be what is it about what is the big picture of it what images does it show sometimes some keywords are very visual sometimes some keywords are not so visual and we may need different approaches to handle different types of them so for instance this that lumpy skin disease keyword that we had um, seen and that is i'm sure mentioned in one of your daily feeder pages it's a very visual keyword in fact graphic images if i do show it to you we want that there's not pleasant images but once you see those images you will never forget those images that is clear it will always be clear to you what lumpy skin disease is wh who what type of animal it affects and what there are some important other things also that will appear so that is the 360 degree condenser let us try to do that for say let us try to do that say for ins vikrant and let's see then what it throws up so i have google in front in front of me i input the keyword ins vikrant this is what happens this is what i see when i google ins vikrant and obviously it's a very hot topic but look at the images striking amazing incredible images and some useful information i have about 3 word 3 minutes i have about 3 minutes to explore this to my heart's content i can do whatever i want i just need to form a big picture of what it is look at the size of this thing 
it is fantastic fabulous it is literally a, it, it's an airport it's basically an airport on water it, it's a ship which is also an airport that's incredible imagine the amount of engineering which must have gone into it and now india has its own so that's very cool and something very impressive and so that is ins vikrant obviously there's a lot of detail about it which we still have to see but uh, see what google is trying to tell me on the face of it what is what is it showing me it's showing me it's 262 meters it, cochin shipyard is the builder this is its cost is 0.5 billion it ultimately uh, has costed this amount by 2020 commission on 2nd september 2022 and this is ins vikrant so a lot of news about it and uh, since i have meet india's black panther fighters that will fly from ins vikrant see that's another in, in, interesting tidbit of information black panther fighter jets will be the fighter jets which will fly from vikrant and obviously now vikrant you know is an aircraft carrier this is an aircraft carrier you see this flat surface here that's a runway airports aircrafts jet aircrafts or fighter fighter aircraft or whatever whatever type of aircraft reconnaissance aircraft perhaps take take flight from these incredibly short runways this ship here will have aircrafts parked on it and they may they may take flight and they may land back on it so it's a moving airport very cool apart from that what is i am sure google news let's see what google news is showing me google news is obviously showing me that it is it has been commissioned that's fine uh, this is interesting vikrant sales push for third aircraft carrier now with ins vikrant joining ins vikramaditya see there's another important bit of information which you may already have known but still without much effort see what all it's giving us let's take it with ins vikrant joining ins vikramaditya in the indian navy service a push for a third aircraft carrier seems to be getting stronger that's interesting it is indigenously designed and that is a really big deal from the military uh, point of view and uh, so having done that 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 means that i have done my big picture condenser for ins vikrant so i did that for ins vikrant what is going to happen next that next the next column that you will encounter is called the governance perspective it's called the governance perspective what i call the prism of governance but well, that's interesting and it's an an interesting trope really about what what governance is and what i want you to do here is very simple i want you to think like a bureaucrat think like an administrator don't look at ins vikrant or any other thing like just a citizen who should be aware think about it from the point of view of somebody in the machinery of the government making important decisions because that is the type of mindset that the upsc will want to know it contains this step contains three questions three questions it asks you which ministry or department would the keyword fall under as a subject matter simple enough not not too complicated what governance challenges does it bring to the indian government this might be subjective we will have to see we will have to see what rules or policies exist what rules it is not off it's a typo what rules or policies exist in india to tackle these challenges that is what this governance perspective is asking us to do now we can't do any extra research because we don't have infinite amount of time maybe you want to do some research for one or two topics you can do that but essentially we have to try and answer these questions based on what we saw what we saw was that it's obviously the ministry of defense for ins vikrant what challenges does it challenges one budget did you so did you see you saw 0.5 billion dollars is commissioned ended up being 3.3 billion dollars billion dollars 1 billion dollar by the way is 7000 crore rupees multiply that into 3.3 and so budget of course is one issue the time it takes to build it is another issue but at the same time it gives you a lot of strategic advantage because you can have then aircraft on the move on the open ocean you have this entire huge indian ocean which the indian subcontinent is essentially surrounded by which is very important territory and it is also very very there very important waters strategically for various reasons for trade for security for our neighbors for 
an infinite amount of reasons. They are important. This I, this career immediately puts um, India at a very strong and uh, strategic position, right? So that is the governance perspective. Now, all all we are doing is thinking from the point of view of the government. Governance, act, in fact, I would say. And when I say government, I don't mean political leadership. I don't mean political leadership. I mean, think about it from the point of view of a bureaucrat or a leader who has to take these decisions and think for the country. That's, in fact, a better way to put it. Think about the country as if you were the one who was responsible. That is what it means. This governance was set in nothing more. Just think from that point of view. The other question it is asking you is which ministry or department would that keyword fall under? This is easy enough. What rules or policies exist in India to tackle these challenges? Now, for INS Vikrant, maybe I maybe you know, maybe you don't know. It depends. But there is this whole issue, you know, indigenization of defense, indigenization of defense equipment. So, where India has traditionally been an importer of uh, defense equipment armor tanks fighter aircrafts jets even even ins vikram aditya was not indigenous it, this is the vikram is the first indigenous one the first one was purchased from russia if my information is correct but we used to import these defense equipment and they're of course obviously extremely expensive indigenization would mean that we can now create our own that we become that india becomes self-reliant but it also means that the economy gets a boost so there may be arguments for or against doesn't matter that is not our debate we don't it does not matter to us what matters to us is that we were able to think about it that we were able to connect that issue to ins vikrant and we were able to write it somewhere if you can come up with that great if you cannot come up with that no problem in time knowledge will increase as knowledge increases all of these things will become obvious the network the knowledge network will expand the knowledge network will help. That's what we are trying to do. What are we trying to do? We are creating an expansion of your knowledge networks from the point of view of the exam. This governance perspective is a new thing. It's not, it doesn't just then leave current affairs as something that you need to read or study. It forces then you to take this governance perspective, that point of view of somebody responsible for the country and think about it from that point of view, not only as a citizen. That is a strangely hidden and important aspect of the UPSC exam, which is not spoken about. I do not know why, but that is what the UPSC is testing for, right? the future leaders, future bureaucrats. So they would expect you to think like that, to be able to think like that. And that, if you look at the main questions, in the mains exam, you'll, you'll notice that clearly, very clearly in that pattern, you'll see it. Every other question is about governance perspective. In fact, more than the test knowledge, they want to see if you can take that perspective or not. And what are your suggestions about it? So that is one thing. The last column, which you saw, by the way, this is what it will look like if printed, this critical insights column, this is part of the UPSC diary, the ultimate UPSC diary. I will not tell you much about it now. It will come in due course of time. Let the suspense remain. It is going to be amazing, guaranteed. So the last one, critical insights. It's critical insights. In critical insights, I want you to write down any important thoughts or notes which come to your mind or that you pick out from your search. And another interesting thing, in this critical insights, I want you to guess at what a, what a good question can be. In fact, my challenge in this critical insights column is for you to frame an interesting, intellectually good level UPSC type question on that keyword. What type of question would the UPSC wish to ask for INS Vikramaditya or INS Vikranath? You think about it from the point of view of the examiner and frame that question whether or not you know the answer frame that question it's like playing chess with yourself think about it from the point of view of the upsc examiner what type of question would they prefer to make perhaps i don't know maybe they wish to make about um, about how 
aircraft carriers can increase maritime security and have strategic importance how maybe we can then talk about piracy and what all a lot of things you won't get into the details but the question can be framed the question if you can frame it the better you get at framing these questions the better you will get at answering them and that is also another exercise which we don't do but why don't we why don't we this is not technical stuff which we are not qualified to ask questions about this so once it's in our knowledge it should be within our scope to ask these intelligent questions the more we ask them the more be the better we get at it that is why that column exists so once all these steps are done once you have put a keyword through all these put it through this put it through this this and this all of this you put it through and you do this for say 7 days you will be sol solving two problems one problem how to consolidate that information that you had extracted from the point of view of the exam which every day you cannot do because you have you don't have infinite time you have to read the newspaper you have to do other things you have to read optionals and gs and so much already on your plate you did enough by extracting it now every two weeks ideally ideally i think it should be done every two weeks i don't think you can do this keyword analyzer challenge every week because a week is too short a time period i think the week passes very quickly and it's going to be a consistency issue i think the ideal time gap is two weeks of daily feeder extraction and after that whatever backlog you have of keywords to finish it off in after two weeks that would be in my opinion a very good time frame to do it it will give you enough breaks in between it will give you enough time enough knowledge will get accumulated your knowledge and your previous analysis will get even it will, it will get refined your knowledge by the time you analyze that keyword will have grown because you see for instance this one keyword that we experimented with ins vikrant now will come again and again in the newspaper for many days there may even be an editorial about it so if we give it a gap and if we did that a couple of another week from now then already our knowledge would have been refined so ideal would be two weeks we are doing it after one week because we have to learn how to swim we have to learn how to swim in this ocean of information this is us doing that so then that leaves us with actually nothing we've covered it all but i would rather do one or two more keywords so that i feel comfortable that you have completely grasped what we are trying to do now this is interesting i had i mentioned this a while ago lumpy skin disease if you remember lumpy skin disease has been in the news what happens if we put the lumpy skin disease keyword through this matrix of questions through this intellectual exercise what happens would you like to see what happens and i am warning you there might be some graphic images it's not for the weak hearted but it's true and it's there so for those who can stomach it let's see what happens when we use the keyword analyzer on lumpy skin we go to google we write lumpy skin disease no not lump lumpy skin disease and there you go right there first thing which strikes me obviously the images now once you've seen it you can't unsee this now can you i apologize if it's disturbing but it is a disease that the poor animals suffer from it and we need to know about it because we depend on these poor animals so much that we don't realize it so it's only appropriate that we know about it and we do something about it in any case lumpy skin disease is an infectious viral disease immediately this strikes my mind immediately the upsc may ask in the prelims exam lumpy skin disease is bacterial fungal or viral it's viral now we know that it's viral it is characterized by eruption of nodules which may cover the animals whole body we understand that that is we know we know that it affects cattle we figured it out last week itself when we had first encountered it 
so see here see what it google is already telling me that it is affecting farmers they are they are suffering huge losses from indigenous vaccine another important tidbit and if you remember we spoke about an indigenous vaccine also indigenous vaccine against lumpy skin disease to hit the market soon let's see what google news throws up 11.2 lakh cattle that is a lot of cattle they have got this they have got this disease goat pox vaccine if you remember last time we mentioned this goat pox vaccine is being administered all right images well we know what we'll find in images this is what we'll find we find images of the animal afflicted with a disease but interestingly look what happens when we put it through this lumpy skin disease we did the first one i write lumpy skin disease i tick mark google and i tick mark all three because i did i did those then the prism of governance that becomes interesting with the information gathered from the searches do your best to answer the following which ministry or department would the keyword fall under as a subject matter ministry of animal husbandry ministry department of animal husbandry ministry of agriculture science and technology perhaps both i am going to write that because i am going to write science and technology particularly because i just read indigenous vaccine that's important indigenous vaccine what government challenges does it bring see it's an important question it's not just about lumpy skin it's about what governance challenges farmers are suffering we have an indigenous vaccine but it's not rolled out yet the disease seems to be killing the cattle at an alarming rate what we need to do is to hurry up to have this in place already and if this one lumpy skin disease can affect farmers and really damage them and really hurt agriculture in this way then there must be many such diseases which may affect crops wheat rice the staple food sources that we rely on obviously you've heard of bird flu and that was one thing that affected everybody and immediately one thinks about these governance challenges about this what about other such diseases but particularly but what about this one what can be done to make sure that it's rolled out asap that people get it and this disease is arrested the damage that it is causing is arrested so this is the perspective of governance the perspective of you thinking from that from that vantage point what rules or policies exist in india to tackle these challenges now this may require you to do some research if you if you are going to do some research about this don't do more than one or two minutes worth of research what policies exist there may i'm sure there are policies for this i'm sure there are policies for this type of eventuality although it is not nearly big enough to be called a national issue so we it, disaster management will not be attracted but there may i'm sure pretty a lot of policies would be there so in in a case like this where this happens to farmers what type of compensation can they be given what type of subsidies could they possibly be given would be covered under under those policies so if you can figure those policies out that would be really good and this is what we need to do with the rest critical insights virus it's a viral disease that's one indigenous vaccine number 2 whatever you want to write it's up to you slightly subjective not everybody will have the same analysis of it so what did we do a very quick refresher we were learning how to swim in an ocean of information particularly the one which pertains to current affairs particularly that we started to fill the daily feeder page in which we were able to extract information from the newspapers and put it in this efficient and condensed format in level 2 after some time perhaps 7 days perhaps 14 days of doing this daily we put all the keywords or at least 50 keywords from our past backlog of daily feeder pages where we had extracted keywords we took those keywords we put them through this tool keyword analyzer tool keyword analyzer analyzer challenge 
the keyword analyzer challenge has sections one section is called the 360 degree picture condenser here it put asks us to have a 360 degree view about the whole thing and various searches are done to form a overall perspective but the searches must not be more than 3 minutes per keyword that you have to follow sincerely you must because otherwise you'll get lost and there's no end to it really there are, we have to have you have to make this intelligent search engine of google work for us otherwise if we don't know when to stop then it will take you on a journey of links leading to links and hyperlinks and videos and just lose track that's why the structure is useful so we follow the rules after the big picture condenser we put it through our mind and through some research through this prism of governance where we think like the person responsible like the policy maker like the policy executor like the civil servant like an ias officer or like an ips officer if it's a security issue and we think about it from that point of view we think which ministry this might pertain to we think which policies exist perhaps in the article of the newspaper themselves the policies are mentioned perhaps we had taken those policies and used it in our daily feeder pages if we had not that's fine we do some research we find it then we asked a very interesting question we asked what are our critical insights about that keyword and then what type of questions might the upsc like to ask what type of questions would perhaps they like to ask if you don't know anything about the type of questions they ask just spend 5 to 10 minutes take a look at the prelims paper take a look at the mains paper you will know what type of questions they ask what type of questions they ask in gs1 gs2 gs3 in, in prelims it obvious the questions are not easy the questions are not easy because we don't think about it you don't think about them from the right perspective and when you look at the questions you will notice this uh, governance perspective pattern runs all throughout it that is a guarantee so that's what we did now if you are ready your mission this is not mission impossible this is mission possible in fact it this is mission mandatory it is not even mission impossible it's mission compulsory so your mission compulsory whether or not you choose to accept it mission compulsory is this are you ready you must fill for me this keyword analyzer challenge in word word document word format no need to take a print out because this is very you'll be on the laptop or on the phone doing this challenge so there is no point transferring it just do it on a word doc it will be faster fill the keyword analyzer challenge of all the important keywords which you had extracted in the past 7 days of the daily feeder pages and finish it by midnight tomorrow whenever you see this video whenever you see this tomorrow midnight will give you around around 24 to 36 hours roughly to complete it more than enough time this may take 3 to 4 hours how many keywords should you analyze if what what if there are 100 if there are 100 or many keywords perhaps perhaps there's a big backlog perhaps you wrote too many keywords you have to be selective i will trust your judgment you will know the keywords what type of keywords they can if you can if if you can do all of them but if you can't at least 250 at least at least that's what i would like you to do another part of the challenge and this now becomes a slightly mission difficult not mission impossible mission difficult what is mission difficult that was mission compulsory now this is mission difficult mission difficult is that you continue this daily feeder challenge mission difficult is that now you continue this daily feeder challenge for another 2 weeks you did it for one week you are already in the flow you are already in the habit don't let the momentum break don't let the momentum break do the daily feeder challenge take out printouts of it 14 printouts that's not much effort take out those printouts fill them every day for the next 14 days and the next time we do this keyword analyzer challenge will be after 14 days not after 7 days like this 
so you are growing advanced now you are reverse engineering the content of the newspaper and increasing your knowledge from the point of view of the exam itself thinking like a future bureaucrat thinking like a the type of person that the upsc wants to recruit yes so that ladies and gentlemen is your challenge it's not going to be an easy one but i can guarantee that it's going to be an interesting one and while you do this challenge i want you to contrast it compare it compare the experience of doing this challenge with when you read monthly or weekly compilations of a you of a coaching institute or from any magazine which you may use of current affairs and notice the difference when you see those compilations you are you will be bombarded with information it's as if it's as if they literally air dropped you in the ocean of information and you have no way you don't even know where to begin with all that information how do you put it in your head how do you assimilate it it's not easy to do not easy to do now with this process now that you are already involved now that you are already engaged when you do this keyword analyzer challenge notice the difference also notice the quality of knowledge the quality of that knowledge that you will accumulate notice it will stick it will stick much longer to your mind those daily feeder keywords that you had taken they will stick you invested your energy you are personally involved now you are asking questions your brain is more active your brain is asking questions it's interacting you are building practical knowledge of the world at a very fast rate right that is a very different approach from reading somebody else's notes that may be useful somebody else's notes may come to our rescue when we are not able to do much but as much as we can it is our duty to address this head on straight on now you have the structure and you have the challenge you have a mission compulsory and you have a mission difficult get on to these missions i will be waiting for the results and like i said last time this is not the end of the current affairs segment now you have seen a small portion of it we used something which we did in the daily feeder pages that got us here today there's still a lot we have not used there is still a lot that needs to be done it's very it's going to be very interesting i hope that you enjoy this process of learning i hope that it brings you clarity i hope that it starts your brain get your brain jogging that it gets your thoughts firing that it gets your orientation there is something called an orientation for the upsc exam where it takes some time and you will notice veteran upsc aspirants have it and obviously the ones who are selected also have it by default so that orientation we should have we shouldn't wait for attempts of hit and trial to get that that orientation let's have that quickly let's not waste time let's get on it i will see you next time and i hope that you continue to work hard and make me proud i am with you and you have my support always i'll see you next time